Welcome to a video that's all about mining squares. The first thing we need to do, penetrate the earth, at which point squares rise from the ground. The longer we hold it, the deeper we penetrate. And then when we get bored of that, we tear these cubes apart and mine them for resources, 64 Sharonite. So we'll go ahead and take advantage of all of these, smashing every last cube into bits. And then you'll never guess what, we're gonna do it again. Because we got a little deeper, these cubes have some yellow spots in them, hopefully that's gold or something equally valuable. It's fool's gold. So to me, that's really just basic gold. I like the way it even makes a fancy sound as we mine it. It makes it feel much fancier. We very quickly got another piece of gold out, so we're gonna mine that because now we can get the channel cooler. Place this next to the cube extracting machine to extract cubes twice as fast. I think before doing that, we need a destabilizer though. So now when we produce the cubes, we can break them twice as quickly. We're getting deeper and deeper though, we're at 60 meters. We haven't seen any gold in a while. I can actually hear one in here though, and we just mined another one, so now we can get a channel cooler. So now when we're doing this, the cubes will pop up twice as quickly as before. That's much better. So it turns out when my, my machines run out of gold, I need to manually replace it as well. So if you need me for the next little while, I'm going to be penetrating ever deeper to find better and better materials. I feel like I should maybe have a destabilizer around all sides of this, but I'm not really sure the most efficient layout yet. There is a reverse valve that prevents the cube extracting machine from resetting to the original position if placed next to it. Maybe it just means it auto mines? Is that what it's trying to say? I assumed it just meant like if I let go it wouldn't go back to the top like that, but maybe that just means it keeps mining automatically, which would actually be quite nice. I'm gonna place that over there and see if I was correct. Uh, so all the way down it goes. I don't know how it works. Wait, wait, maybe I need to put the thing in first. You gotta feed them the things. So if I let it go there... Nope, it just doesn't come back up, which is a very small difference. Well, we made it down 100 meters already, and we're definitely finding more gold suddenly. So that's got to be good for us. We'll find out what's after gold soon enough. So it looks like there's going to be a way to make this faster. If we put another cooler over here, this thing's going to uh, rise the cubes out even quicker. Then I'm also going to add a destabilizer over here, at least for now. That's going to need a gold thing to keep going. But now as we uh, farm up all the cubes, we should be able to break them all quickly. In particular, this one should break quickly because it's got both destabilizers destabilizing it. And I'm already quite a fan of the way you can stack the upgrades so they have bigger, better effects. And as soon as we buy, uh, mine a few more of the Sharonites, we're going to get an auxiliary pump. Reverse valve upgrade provides pressure to the source channel if placed next to it. Everything takes up room, so you gotta sort of uh, have something of a plan of how you're gonna do this. Uh, in the meantime, apparently I can also make an industrial destabilizer. That probably wasn't the right thing to add, but we added one anyway because I wanted to see what it does. Apparently it's just a more powerful destabilizer, so it's gonna work even harder for us. Uh, I think we might have to add the blocks to make it go though. We need 64 gold blocks to make that work, so this is why it's important to read before you touch things. You'd think I'd learn that eventually, but this is the press those around me have to deal with on a daily basis. Well, there's the 64 gold I need to make that thing work. Hopefully those last for a long time or that investment will not pay for itself. That is a lot quicker though, and this one should be the quickest of all. A few quick taps and it breaks. So the auxiliary pump is a reverse valve upgrade. It goes on top of the old one. It takes eight gold to go. I once again didn't read because I already forgot the lesson we learned 10 seconds ago. Luckily this one only needs eight, so it's very quick to make that. Now it applies the pressure by itself, so I don't have to click on that thing anymore. So I can just focus my effort on clicking on the cubes once again, and this is the good life. I think I'm also going to add a destabilizer here, and another one maybe here, and I could actually put one there if I felt so inclined. They don't reach super far. I definitely did not mean to put one over there, but this is what's happened, so that's fine. We'll keep on clicking. These should break faster than ever before, though. The best part is, I don't know how to delete things. We're, this one's hungry again. We gotta make sure to keep beating our machines. I keep forgetting that. Gonna add another destabilizer over there. Uh, what I want is to take this off. How do I? There we go. We really should just be adding as many things as we can right now, because we can mine these super, super quick if we have enough destabilizers. We're officially down over 200 meters, so we're making progress. And we found our first blue something. Uh, can now we can get an entropy resonator. Periodically crushes resources are placed next to a cube. So if we put that here, it should actually just work away provided we have one blue square for it, which we do. So it's slowly working away on crushing that. Uh, it's doing its best. It's working along as fast as it can. There we go. You have to unlock the demolish button. You use one of these to get rid of one of those and then all is well again. We just got to be careful what we click on. I think down here I was also uh, didn't have enough breakers to help this guy work his way along. But in saying that we should also put another destabilizer here. We can actually get a whole new extracting channel as well. But if we put a destabilizer here, I'm pretty sure it can affect this block. Then as soon as we uh, refeed our machine a bunch of gold, we should be able to uh, pump that out and we'll see how quick it breaks now. 
So it's auto breaking that, still not very quickly. So we'll try and help it out with even another uh, destabilizer there. It'd be great if that could auto mine forever. But me, myself, I'm still much better at clicking. If I wanted to let this run for 12 hours, we could set those up though. We can also place a Sharonite Enrichment Vat. I think we could just put that anywhere we want. And it's just slowly going to convert resources. Provided we have enough, it needs 32 purples to get itself going. So I think we can then feed it and it will convert. I've actually put our bulb in a really annoying spot because it sits on the menu and covers the words. So now I can just sit back and mine away. We're at 270 meters. So the black bulb finally exploded again actually gave us quite a bit of uh, gold. It actually gave me enough to upgrade another one of these into another industrial stabilizer and then fill it with gold still. So now we can mine many of these cubes even quicker again. So they get more expensive the more you place. They go up by about 100 each time, but some of these are basically a few quick clicks and they break. The problem is I can't summon the squares fast enough anymore. So maybe I'm actually better off putting a channel cooler here so this thing will produce faster automatically. That's a little better. And uh, we can get rid of some of these other ones then and upgrade some of the other ones instead. Our gold bulb just exploded again. 400 gold to our name. We're going deeper quicker. And I guess we don't need this one. And that one's actually still helping so we won't get rid of that one. Currently, every two blocks takes us down one meter, so if we want to get anywhere, we got a lot of blocks to click on. And I kind of like the ease of use of these bulb things, so I'm just going to put another one down over here, and they're going to convert into gold. The other resources seem easy to find. Gold is the hard one so far. I think I'm going to do something that's maybe stupid, though. I'm going to change my setup a little bit. I'm going to demolish an expensive building. I can have my resources back, though, because I can put a channel cooler where that thing was as soon as it goes away, and now we're going to produce blocks faster, and I can just break these ones quicker instead. Like, if I put an industrial destabilizer, say, here, that's going to affect lots of blocks and we'll soon do another one of those and then we can just rapid fire break these because they're popping up almost as fast as we can break them so that's going fast and if we put an industrial destabilizer there even our auto blocks gonna start breaking these pretty quick uh we're starting to break these really quick thanks to our all of our super destabilizers and that's with one of them was even out of gold so two clicks is enough to break these now we're coming up to the 400 meter mark so hopefully we'll find something new at that point and get to build new things getting close what are we gonna find for 400 meters so far, nothing at all. I don't think I need our entropy resonator right now. I think I can actually just use uh, more crushing machines. I don't need a machine to do the work for me. I can do the clicking all by myself. If I really want to push the pace, we can actually make this go quite quickly by going like that, then two clicks each, and back to pushing them, go again. Each time we do that, it gets us a couple meters more. Like we just crossed the 400 meter mark and we're already down to 450 meters as of now. We've gathered almost 2000 gold things already. So we're making resources quickly. I think the secret is more of these things. So we're just going to have four of these going now. Then when they're ready to go, it's a good investment. I do want to try adding one more channel cooler just to see how quick it can uh, make these come up. I thought it might be faster ultimately and it debatably is. We got a new block. Blood of the land, get beta pylene. There, don't make these easy to pronounce. Ooh, now I can make much better stuff. The first thing we're gonna do is demolish some things we definitely don't need anymore. Uh, also, our thing just exploded and gave us almost 3,000 uh, of that, so we're gonna load these again. It's like popcorn. I was reading about this new material. Uh, basically, what I can figure, we're gonna need a lot of it, so we're just gonna sit here and wait for a lot of it to mine. At this point, we have what we need to build a Sharonite sump. Reclaims a uh, Canaanite from liquefied Sharonite sediments in the presence of catalysts. I'm not really sure what that means or if this is actually gonna do anything. Oh, there's a pump station, so it probably has something to do with that. Uh, the popcorn's also done. That uh, pretty much is what I'm here for to watch that thing go off. Uh, we had to put so many resources into that, we actually can't afford the pump station now, but we got lots of gold, almost 4,000. Plus the black stuff's super easy to mine anyway, we mine it quicker than anything. So the pump station, an, an auxiliary pump upgrade, provides quadruple pressure to a source channel. So if we put it over that, uh, and give it the food it needs to operate, it's going to be better pumping, so that means these are going to come up super quick now. Now we can rapid fire. Perfect. Now, so by happy accident, we are super mining. And we quickly blew through the 500 meter mark. We're getting close to the 525 meter mark. And our pump station upgrade cost almost 8,000 blocks. We've almost made those back. We're back up to 7,000 black ones. That means we could probably reload these guys again, and they'll be ready soon enough to give us more gold. I've also placed one of these uh, pump things here. I'm not sure if it has to be beside this or not, but it seems to be working. I fed it a bunch of stuff, and soon it'll give us back a bunch more stuff. We're at 580 meters, soon to be 600. We are flying through the depth. Not making the blue stuff anymore. We're not finding it, so we need to use things like this to actually produce it. So we're not going to put any more things into our popcorn poppers, because we need to try and save up as much blue stuff as I can, presumably. But we did get some blues out of this, so we take 4,064 and 32, so that's going to be worth it. In fact, I might make another one of those. Hmm, we just need a few more of the black blocks to fill that up, but it's going to be a balancing act. 
For now, we're getting lots of black and lots of red, so we'll just keep mining away on those. There we go, got that thing all filled up, so they're both producing the blue blocks again. There is a material streamer tower that seems really cool, but it takes 32,000 black and red, so it's going to be a minute before we have that kind of riches. Although at this rate, we are uh, up to almost 650 meters down, so we're going to find newer, better stuff soon. I've uh, got an achievement for 640 meters and 650 meters. As that thing got completed, we are going to sacrifice that many pieces again because we can make up for it. We're turning into mostly red blocks at this point. I guess that's why they give us a beta pylene oxidizer. It's actually going to produce the black blocks again because I feel like they're going to get rarer and rarer. So we'll go ahead and throw one of these down, I guess. Uh, we need to feed a lot of red blocks into it, but we're mining mostly red blocks now. So I guess that works out. All the wire, we're going deeper and deeper, 666 meters. I feel like the blue blocks are still going to be the hardest to get, at least for now. Because in order to make them, uh, I've got to put a whole bunch of stuff into here. And to do that, I've got to put a whole bunch of stuff into here first. Clearly, we're going through a patch of this stuff. But we've officially crossed the 700 meter mark. There's nothing new yet, but the new materials seem to pop out at random times. But this thing's ready to go again. All we got to do is give 8200 of our rare red blocks. I guess they're now common red blocks. But we did save up a lot of gold earlier by sacrificing a lot of the blues that we maybe need now. But we have lots of gold. I can't wait to see what confusing machine we get to use next. The cubes at this point are pure red. We're getting nothing but the red stuff, so it's adding up quickly. I just hope we have a use for it. The big machine finally broke through with this stuff and it actually gave us like a lot of it. So we're going to load that thing up again and everything else we can and then everything's happy again. 750 meters, we are three quarters of the way down to 1000. It's only now that I realize how rare some of these resources are that I regret demolishing some buildings earlier because I wasted a lot of resources doing that. But we're actually getting closer to the material streamer. We actually have enough of the black stuff already, we're waiting on the red. But we're mining a lot of the red uh, every few seconds so we'll just keep piling up the materials. We've officially broken through 800 meters so we're well on the way to 1000. I've also decided that now would be a good time to be lazy and use an auto clicker. We've clicked the cube 6400 times before I used it so I did pretty good. All of the machines just finished uh, so we're gonna go ahead and maybe load up these two because I still have this Sharonite Despair. Not gonna do that one again yet because we're gonna keep mining red blocks because we're almost at the material streamer. And we're coming up to 850 meters depth, so I'm hoping we find a new material soon as well. I was reading through this weird conversation in the lower left and it said something about being above me and I found this. When I click on it, it makes a sound. Other than that, it doesn't seem to do much. But clearly there's stuff out there on the map. We are going to continue clicking our cubes for now. There is a new something 900 meters. We got what's maybe an emerald and it is really hard to break. But we'll see what happens when we finally unlock that. Wow, that thing is not giving up easy. That's hopefully something amazing. Green energy, find a hell gem. I got an achievement for doing that within the first 16 four minutes apparently. And we can definitely tell when we've come up on one of those because the cube gets ridiculously hard to break. Luckily, the green hell gem could be used to actually upgrade our destabilizer to make themselves stronger. So they're hard to mine now, but they'll pay for themselves because they'll be able to destabilize everything else around them. So as soon as we chew our way through the rest of this one, that's gem number five. So now we can do the hell gem destabilizer. We're gonna make that one that and it needs to eat one gem to work. But now when we hit the green gem thing, we're going to tear through those blocks instead. Boost the power of resource crushing process by 625 times. So if we ever find any more of the rare green gems, we're definitely going to make another one or two of those things. I want to single click these cubes. Down to 950 meters. I'm just clicking away trying to mine as many of the red blocks as I can. And we finally mined enough for a material streamer tower. I don't know if this is going to be worth it right now or not or what it does, so we'll put it there. So far, it doesn't seem to do a lot. But while we're here, I'll maybe make a recycling tower. You can only put one of these in. But now if we have to demolish something, we get 90% of our resources back. In case we have to demolish whatever that thing is. So I think what the streamer tower actually does is make the cubes go into my materials quicker. Uh, not entirely sure why that's a great thing, but I'll take it. And we're running out of lots of materials, so I'm going to need more reds to start these other processes going again. So after reading through the machines, it's pretty obviously we're going to need more of the Sharonite. So we're going to need to sacrifice a lot of the red blocks to get it. And we do that with this machine. Uh, we just passed the 1000 meter mark. I didn't even notice because I was just clicking away. It's also worth noting that nothing of note happened at 1000 meters but we'll probably hit something at like 1120. To make another hell gem destabilizer which I really want we need 24,570. We have 23,880 so we need to do this machine one more time. But you know what that's okay because I was thinking I wanted to click on the cube more times anyway. And our machine just went off again so now I can get another hell gem destabilizer so we'll put that there where it's going to affect both the blocks. And now they'll break even quicker once that thing actually gets loaded with the proper block. That's better. Now we can mine the hell gem super quick. At first it took a ton of effort. Now it goes that quick. There's about 1100 meters. Uh, we actually mined up another 8500. So I get to start this machine again. 
and then I gotta start both of these again just to work our way up to the blue blocks. Then I gotta decide what I want to build next and how many green gems I want to mine up. I've just realized there might have actually been an easier way to do this the entire time. This way would work, but if you just take another extractor channel, does that have like a surface level? I think it actually does, so it's going to put out basic cubes again so you can mine basic materials. Yep, that would also work quite nicely. So let's go ahead and recycle that, and then we're going to make a small change to our setup. So if I put that in there, it's going to uh, produce blocks that are against the other destabilizers so we can break them super quick. So now we just need to get a similar situation to what we have across here. So there we go, I've got all the pieces to have a mirrored situation so I can mine these. Strangely slowly considering what they are, but I guess maybe the uh, Elder Stabilizers are really good for this stuff and not so much the other ones. And I need to remember to keep all of the different machines fed as well. Uh, we'll work our way around mining all sorts of things. It feels good to be so easily mining uh, some of those weaker materials again. Uh, I'm also going to make a double destabilizer here because I think I want to go back and forth between this one and this one because we can mine all sorts of materials super fast. We've crossed 1100 meters on our deeper drill as well. Since I need some gold again, I've just gone and uh, filled up my popcorn makers one more time. Since we can mine shallow blocks anyway, we can mine whatever resources we want, but we're getting out of the gold zone again already, so we're going to need to get those however we can. The popcorn just finished, gave me a about 1,000 gold, so that feels good again. But you know what? It's really not that expensive uh, to fill these up, so we're gonna do that again. You can never have too much of a good thing, so we're just gonna keep popping the gold for the time being until I figure out what I'm doing. It's starting to seem like we're hitting a lot more of the hell gems as we get a little bit deeper, so hopefully that's a trend that continues. They're being hard to find. I've also officially mined 50,000 black blocks. Did not get any achievement at all for that. I saved up 64, 65 hell gems. That's because I want to make a hell gem injector. Swaps a random resource from an adjacent key cube with a hell gem if there are none. I definitely want to see if I can put one in the black blocks so I'm going to put the hell gem injector here and it's hopefully going to inject hell gems into the black one here. It's looking like it can so far it's not saying that it can't but you need to actually uh fill the injector up as soon as we can actually place that with 32 gems and then it will hopefully pay for itself and find us some more gems it's working. Yeah now we can make a fortune in easy gems I can turn the auto clicker on and relax. I guess all it's really meant to do though is make mining quicker because you put 32 gems in and it gives it 32 charges so you give it 32 and it finds you 32. I think it's just supposed to make mining a little bit quicker at this point because when there's a gem it goes a lot quicker to chew through a block. So we'll let this run for the next 40 years and see what we find.